the lovely thing about a total solar eclipse is that it's like the world's best coronagraph. Some things can only be done from above the atmosphere. Some things, if you can do them from the ground, you still have to contend with the fact that the atmosphere is there. If you're trying to look at the corona, the outer atmosphere of the sun, that is one million times dimmer than the surface, than the disk of the sun. So uh, if you're trying to look at it through the sky, you're gonna have a very hard time. There's no one instrument that can that has the what we call the dynamic range to be able to see something as bright as the surface of the sun and as dim as the corona uh, all at one time. And there are ways around that, but uh, but you have to be creative. It's really difficult to observe the sun in midwave infrared because the atmosphere absorbs it and because the atmosphere emits it. So there have been only a handful of observations previously. One of them was ours in 2017 with these WB-57 jets. These WB-57 jets are high-flying aircraft. They can fly at altitudes up to 60 to 65,000 feet. We're gonna be flying them at 50,000 feet for this eclipse, and that's enough to get us above 90% of the water vapor in Earth's atmosphere. And the nice thing about that then is it opens up those wavelength windows so that we can see light that normally would be blocked by the atmosphere or that normally would be washed out by the atmosphere's own emission. In 2017, we had our experiment on both airplanes and uh, we flew the airplanes in tandem like this, one in front of the other. So the eclipse passed over one, then it passed over the other. And in that way, we were able to double the observing time from the planes. Just like with any other scientific experiment, the idea is you make measurements to try to answer the questions you have now, and hopefully you make progress in answering those questions. And undoubtedly, you now have new questions. And that's what happened to us in 2017, where, we made this mid-wave infrared measurement of the sun, and we didn't really even know what we were going to see. And what we saw was that structures called prominences, which are material from the surface that bubbled up into the corona, um, they're only 20,000 degrees Kelvin or so, 20,000 degrees Celsius. They were about equally bright in the mid-wave infrared as active regions, which are the corona above sunspots that are millions of degrees. So you have something that's a, f a few tens of thousands of degrees, you have something that's millions of degrees, that's a hundred times different in temperature, but they're roughly equally bright in the mid-wave infrared. The physics of why they're equally bright is clearly going to be different, but what is that? So that's what we're hoping to answer with our SAMI experiment this year. And it is a suite of cameras that are imaging the sun in infrared wavelengths to get better spectral understanding of each of those different structures in the midwave infrared. I have an experiment on one plane. Uh, there's another experiment on the other plane. And so instead of flying them like this, we're going to fly them basic. They're actually going to fly like this, but they're basically so close together. They're essentially flying in parallel because we don't want to extend the observing time uh, uh, you know, this way, what we want to do is actually have both of the experiments observing at the same time so that we can compare the results from them. So flying along with the eclipse, they're going to get instead of four and a half minutes, they're going to get just under six and a half minutes of uh, totality per airplane. One of the big open questions about the sun that we are hoping to get uh, some progress towards with this eclipse uh, and that people have been trying to answer for oh 80 years now more than 80 years uh, why is the sun's corona the outer atmosphere of the sun so hot uh, people probably know that the surface of the sun is about 6,000 celsius or 10,000 fahrenheit the corona is millions of degrees that point it doesn't matter if it's celsius or fahrenheit it's millions of degrees it is hundreds of times hotter than the surface and after many years we understand that the energy is being conducted into the corona through the sun's magnetic field that permeates the corona but how does the energy get released from the magnetic field into the corona to heat it up there are different signatures for each of these heating processes and one of the things that we hope to do is basically see if we can see the different signatures and understand 
which heating mechanism is dominant in which kinds of structures in the car. The other big question that a lot of people are trying to ask is, where does the solar wind come from and how does it form? So the solar wind is this constant stream of highly charged, energized particles that are coming off of the sun all the time. It's born in the low corona, but you can't see that most of the time because of all the limitations that we've discussed where it's very difficult to see low down in the corona, except during a total solar eclipse. So a lot of observations that are being made during total solar eclipses are trying to study what are the source regions of the solar wind? How is it formed? Where does it come from? One of the cool things about the WB57 mission that we're flying is that we're gonna be taking something on the order of 30 images per second in each one of our wavelength ranges. And so that gives us the flexibility to study dynamics on all sorts of different time scales from as short as a second or a few seconds to as long as a couple of minutes with the airplane. What we learned from 2024 will help us predict what we'll see in 2026. It will help us decide uh, how do we make changes to the instrument to better measure the kinds of things that we want to see. And it'll help us plan for future space missions to make infrared measurements. We don't have an infrared solar telescope in space. We don't have anything for the sun. These experiments will help us understand how would we design a space-based infrared telescope to get us the best kinds of measurements that give us the most kind of information. You'd think that we would understand our sun super duper well because we're right here. We live right next to it. We've been looking at it for millennia, but there's still a lot of questions. So I know that for decades to come, people are going to be chasing eclipses.